Listen to him so that you can hear when he's knocking on the door. The door to your hearts. Amen. Amen. Have I got a witness this morning? See, we all heard preachers and pastors, evangelists, quote from Revelation. Revelation 3. We're going to be Revelations this morning. 14 through 21. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and I'll dine with him and he with me. Amen. But, but usually the, the, this preacher or this pastor applies this text as an appeal to the unconverted. Amen. Amen. Saying Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. If you open up the door, he will come in. Amen. But in the original text that we're reading this morning, Jesus wasn't talking to the unbeliever. He was talking to the believer. Amen. He was talking to the church. Amen. It wasn't an evangelist appeal. Amen. And so, so what, am I, what am I saying? The point is seeking is something, the one who wrote the, he, today, amen, this message, that the unbeliever will not listen to this. He was writing and saying that the unbeliever does not seek. Amen. Amen. Right. The unbeliever will not seek. The unbeliever will not knock. The unbeliever don't have faith. Come on, somebody. The unbeliever don't know Jesus. So how can he hear the knocking when he don't know? Amen. Amen. Y'all with me this morning? Anybody seeking this morning? Give him glory this morning. You know, seeking, seeking is, buscando, you know, us when we seek, we're seeking the kingdom of God. Yes. Have I got a witness? Amen. And it's the ultimate business of a true Christian or believer to keep seeking God. The church, you and I. Amen. Seeking is a result of faith. Can I teach you a little bit this morning? Yes, Amen. It's not the cause of it. It is it, is what when when you're walking with Christ, you keep seeking Christ. Yes. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Amen. See, when we were first converted, Amen. We we all talked about how we found Christ. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all, when y'all first found Christ, y'all were on fire for God? Everywhere you went, you were talking about God. I, Christ did this. God did this. And, and God showed up. And God is a God on time. And, and, and God, he replenished everything that I lost. God's word said he'd come to give me life abundantly. You're just going on. But then after about a year, you're like, I, I lost my fire. They get quiet up in here. I, I don't hear nobody this morning. No, no. There's no time for losing the fire. <laughs> Amen. You know, we got to keep speaking that we found Christ. Amen. Oh, you know, most people say Christ found me. No, Christ, you know. Or however you found Christ, just keep seeking him. Amen. See, once we have found Christ, it's not the end of our seeking, but the beginning. Did y'all get that? Cuando nosotros hallamos a Cristo, no es ya el final, es, es, es comienza en ese, en ese tiempo. This is when it starts. Amen. And usually when you, you find our, our lost dog, amen, cuando, cuando hay un perro que se ha perdido, you know, when you, you find a, your wallet that you've been lost, amen, or a diamond ring, or whatever it is. It signals an end of searching. Se seña la final de nuestra búsqueda. Que ya 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 no ya no tienes que buscar. Ya lo hallaste. Are y'all with me this morning? But when we find our Savior Jesus Christ, it's the beginning of our search. Comienza y it starts that we keep got to keep seeking God. Because you can find Him for a day. 
Oh my God, I'm talking to somebody this morning. We can find them for a week. We can find them for a month. But what happens as you keep on going and you stop seeking? Your fire runs out. Amen. See, the Christian life begins at that time that God set us free. Have I got a witness? Comienza cuando ya hallaste su salvador. It starts when you found your salvation. When our conversion came. And you know, that's not the end. The end doesn't start when it begins. It grows. It moves. It takes you from faith to faith. It takes you to grace to grace. Come on, somebody. It takes you from glory to glory. You keep seeking. You keep moving. You keep growing in Christ. Have I got a witness? See, this moment of growth starts by not becoming lukewarm. Comienza este, ese crecimiento cuando uh, comienza, no, no comienza uh, está, estando tibio. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Anybody warm this morning? You got to stay seeking God so that the fire continues to grow. Yeah. You know when you start a fire, it only starts. Have I got a witness? Yeah. You, you ever go camping? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you get little twigs. Yeah. You got to get a little twig, you put it together, and you start a little fire, and you go, man, I got a fire. <laughs> and then until you see a real bonfire, you go, man, I got a real fire. Come on, somebody, hey, amen. God said, I need a church not with a little fire. I need a church with a big fire. My, my, my. Y'all with me this morning, amen. Amen. See, our spiritual walk, you got to understand, are we moving from faith to faith? Yes, sir. Amen. Well, when, when you got the, the, the fire down in your bones, it'll take you somewhere. Amen. 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 Listen, Jesus will not force his way into your lives. Amen. He will only come in if he's invited. Amen. Another reason God is knocking at the church's heart is that there might be an area in your life that, that, that's off made off limits to Jesus, to God. Amen. In other words, we got something going on inside us. We don't want his counseling. This word this morning is the counseling of God. There's a direction he's trying to take you. There's, there, there's a plan that he has for you. In the word he says, I'm trying to counsel you. Amen. So, so we got to understand that our faith has a lot to do with God's counseling. The word. Amen. We got to understand that there's an area sometimes in our life that we don't want God to deal with. Amen. So we, we want to hold on to that struggle. We want to hold on to that area in the life to say, no, nah, well, Jesus can't help me right there. But no, no, Jesus wants to help you in every area of your life. Amen. Have I got a witness? And, and when we begin to hold on to that struggle, that area that's off limit to God, that's when we begin to struggle. That's when we begin to lose the fire. We, we don't hear from God no more. Are you listening? Amen. Estás escuchando? It's the word this morning. Amen. You see, Revelation 3.20, it illustrates Christ's desire to come, on, come into our lives. Amen. When he says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Amen. The big question is, are you listening? Amen. Amen. El gran pregunta es, ¿se estás escuchando? You see, because we can listen. We love to listen to music. We love to listen to others talk. We, live to, we like to listen to others cheesemess. Gossip. But we don't want to hear the word. We don't want to hear when God is counseling us. We don't want to hear the pastor, amen, because I'm not doing the counseling today. It's the word of God. Come on, somebody. I didn't come to counsel nobody. I love the word to counsel you today. Because when we begin to hear, we begin to seek, we begin to listen. Are you listening? Yeah, amen. Now, we know that Laodicea, Amen. We're going to be Revelation 320. I'm going to get brother up here in a little bit. Amen. Now we know that Laodicea was the wealthiest of seven cities, the church, you know, known for its banking industry. 
Amen. We teach a little bit this morning. Amen. Sabemos que la iglesia, you know, era el más rico de, de los siete ciudades, ¿no? Estaba en una endrostía bancaria, ¿no? They, they had, the, they were known for their banking industry. Amen. Manufacture of wool and medical school that produced eye solid. But the city had always had a problem with its water supply. Amen. amen. Ellos tenían una escuela de médico para los ojos. Amen. Pero todo el tiempo tenían un problema de, de, del supply de el agua. Amen. So they had a they had a water problem. Amen. Right. So at one time they did a, a, an aqueduct. Amen. That was built to bring water to the city from the hot springs. Amen. But when it but when it got to the city, it was no more longer refreshing. It wasn't no longer hot. It was lukewarm. Right, man. Have I got a witness? Man. See, this is this is what happened to the church. It wasn't refreshing no more. My God, I'm talking to somebody. They, 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 didn't, they didn't care for the church no more. It didn't bring no refreshing to me. Yeah. And this is what happened to the church. It became lukewarm. Amen. You know, lukewarm water will make a bad drink. Amen. Amen. I guess I ain't had no drinkers in the house. I'm in the wrong house. Amen. <laughs> Y'all better help me this morning or I'm going to mess up. Amen. Don't, don't you maybe put me in my sermon this morning. Amen. My God, I'm talking to somebody. And I was thinking, you know, you know, other disgusting water them don't taste good. Amen. Well, that's what God was trying to tell this church that, that you don't taste good no more. Amen. Wow. Ooh, I'm hurting somebody this morning. The, the, the church of Laodicea had became lukewarm and, and thus distasteful, disgustful. Amen. It, it, it was awful. It was nasty. Amen. You know, it was asqueroso. You know, it was it was it was it was no good. Amen. It was horrible. Amen. He's like, man, I, you're doing something that ain't is not pleasing me. Amen. Are you listening? The church believers didn't take stand for anything. Indifference had led to idleness. In other words, the, 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 the church just said, you know what? I don't care no more what the church does. I mean, I just, you know, I just, it's indifferent. And they said he led them to, excuse me, idleness. By neglecting to do anything for Christ, the church had become hardened and self-satisfied and it was destroying itself. So in other words, when we get complacent, we get where we don't want to do nothing for the church. We have no interest in the church. My God, I'm talking. We're getting quiet up in here. We destroy the church. Amen. We, me, you. Have I got a witness? Amen. Are y'all getting this? See, the work of the kingdom, amen. We destroy the church. We when we we got to always be on fire for the kingdom, amen. For for the work of Christ. Right. Amen. You can't settle to follow God with a half heart. No, you can't. Are y'all getting this? Yes. No te puedes conformarte con seguir Dios con un medio corazón. Amen. You, you can't, you can't. My God, I'm talking to somebody this morning. You can't come to God seeking God with a half heart. You can't come to him with a half a foot. My God, a half a leg. Come on, somebody. Amen. You, God, God wants all of you. Amen. He wants every being of you. Everything that you got inside, God is looking for. Are you listening? You know, you got to let Christ fire you up. And let him move in your life. Let him, let him fire up your faith. So there will be action behind your faith. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Yes, Are you listening to your troublemaker? Come on now. Come on. You know, I got to shake it up sometimes in here. I mean, I, I like I like trouble and being a troublemaker sometimes. Amen. Because some people want to fall asleep in the church. They, they ain't doing nothing for the church. Amen. Have I got to win? Not you folks, amen, but the folks I know, amen. You know, don't don't think you're self-sufficient that you can that you can stand on your own two legs. The devil is a liar. So true. Have I got a witness? Amen. Without the fire of God, we are nothing. Yes. No fire, no Jesus. No fire, no Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? This is this is why God said, you know, I don't need you to get lukewarm on me. I, 
I'm tired of seeing the church is just leaving. Too many folks need prayer. You heard their testimony this morning. We were at the church, we were at the hospital the other night. People are dying. And when I was praying for this young man, handsome young man, man, he had these blue eyes, man, and I'm looking and I'm and I'm trying to and I'm trying one of them, I was praying for the first one um, that Margarita asked me to go pray for. Everything when everything that I was praying, I was I was in my in my being, I was saying, is he listening? Can he hear him? You know what he would say? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All, all through the whole time I was in, he was saying amen. No matter they had him down, where they had him sedated, he kept saying amen to Christ. Come on, somebody. He was no, he, he was receiving what I was praying for. And I said, I hope he's listening. And God inspired me to say, you know what? This is what a church does. When you're going to be called at 9 o'clock at night, you'll stop what you're doing and go pray. Come on, somebody. Because of the fire of God. That's the church that he's looking for. To comfort others that are crying. Y'all don't see that part of it. But hopefully one day y'all will. You know, and, it, and, it, and it's through the strong. Amen. Come on, somebody. Y'all got it in y'all. Y'all just got to let it go. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. Verse 17. It says, you say I'm rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Come on up, hermano, Enrique, let's give it up for the minister. We're going to be in Revelations. And then if I go back to 360, he says, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. He's about to discipline you for something. Amen. Because when God, and then this word, he tells us that he disciplines. Yes, sir, yes. He corrects. Why? Because he wants the church to come back to me, to, to him. Come on, somebody. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Leia, 16, 16, 17, hermano. Pero por cuanto eres tibio y no frío ni caliente, te vomitaré de mi boca. Porque tú dices, yo soy rico y me he enriquecido y de ninguna cosa tengo necesidad. Y no sabes que tú eres un desven desventurado, miserable, pobre, ciego y desnudo. Wow, did you hear that? You say I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched. What does wretched mean? You're unhappy. You're depressed. That's it, Pastor. Miserable. You're pitiful. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. I mean, you're sorry. You're harmful, man. My God, I'm talking to somebody this morning. You're inadequate. You know, you're, you're, something's wrong with you. You're, you're poor. Amen. You're, you're blind. And, 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 my God. You're naked. Amen. This is some of us believers that we falsely assume that that sometimes numerous material possessions, amen, is a sign of God's spiritual blessing. Amen. But Laodicea was a wealthy city already, and the church was also wealthy. Have I got a witness? Amen. And they could buy anything that, that came before them. Okay. But, but they were able to see that. They said, okay, I've become rich, and everything that I buy to me is valuable. Yes, sir. Amen. That's what it seemed to them, but they were missing that it had no value. Because the value that God is looking for is the kingdom. Come on, somebody. You, you, you see, they, they had everything, but, but it wasn't worth nothing. We can say we got this, we got that, we got that, but what is it worth? Because my Bible says naked you came in and naked you're going to... My God, I'm talking somebody. From dust you were formed and dust you are returned. Are y'all with me this morning? See your wealth, tu poder, you know, your, your luxury, your lujo, and your, listen, your wealth, your, your, your luxury and easy life can make some folks feel confident. Amen. Have I got a witness? But listen, church, no matter how much you possess, how many donkeys you have? How many horses you have? My God, I'm talking to somebody this morning. I don't care how many possums you got, if taquaches you got. My God, I'm talking to somebody this morning. Have I got a witness? Amen. How much you education you have? How much money? How many Telsas you have? How many wives you have? My God, uh-oh. <laughs> have I got a witness? How much money you make? You have nothing. 
if you don't have a relationship with your Savior, Jesus Christ. You, you see, it's all, you, it all comes to you. You got to know who your Savior is. You got to know when I die, I know where I'm going. Come on, somebody. There is a heaven and there is a hell. I, I don't need this stuff. All I need is Christ. I need to keep seeking. Are you listening? Your gold and riches blind you from your spiritual desires. Hearing the voice of God, the knock on the door. Your, your, your riches will keep you from seeking God. You know how I know? Because he did it to me. And he said, you know what? It's time for me to snatch it from him again. So he can start over. Amen. I thought carrying a suitcase with money and Cadillac with a rag top and being at the corner bar. My God, I'm talking to somebody. I had to understand that it was nothing. I couldn't understand because I didn't know how to knock. See, I was an unbeliever. I, I couldn't see. Come on, somebody. I, I didn't have no faith. Amen. But God had to tear me down. It's in the word. I'm going to take y'all there. Amen. Don't center your life on luxury. Amen. You got to find true riches. Amen. Can I get a witness this morning? Well, I can't get no help this morning. I don't hear this morning. You can't center your life on everything that looks good. You got to center your life on Jesus. See verse 18, what does it say? Lea de Xochitl. Por tanto, yo te aconsejo que de mí compres oro refinado en fuego para que seas rico y vestiduras blancas para vestirte y que no se descubra la vergüenza de tu desnudez y un ojos con colirio para que veas. He said, he said, I counsel you, verse 18, let me take you over the word because I don't want y'all to say, Pastor, you ain't reading the word, amen. I, let me take you over here, amen. Are y'all ready for it? Amen. 18. Amen. He said, I counsel you. What did he say? Counsel. I counsel you. Right there, he's telling us, you know what? I, I, I got to guide you. That's it. I, I'm, I'm leading you. I, I got a plan for you. I'm, there's going to be something good that comes out of you. You to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness. And salve it to put on your eyes so that you can see. Oh my goodness. See the church in Laodicea was, was known for its great wealth. We know that. But Christ told the Laodiceans to buy the gold from him which is spiritual righteousness. You see without the spiritual righteousness in our heart. We can have all the riches we want and it won't take you nowhere. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. The city was proud of their clothes. You know, they had the factories of dyeing, coloring, and industries, and all that, amen. But, but Christ told him to purchase white clothes from him for his righteousness. Come on, somebody. Amen. Also, the church, this church was priding itself on his precious eye salve, you know, that, that healed many eye problems, amen. They, were, they had the medical that they could have, they could heal everybody's eye and whatever it was. But, but Christ told him, Get medicine from him to heal their eyes so that they can see the truth. Hey, my God. He said, I, I got something better than buy it from me because I'm going to allow you to see. Amen. Have I got a witness? Because my Bible tells me, Jesus said, for judgment I came into the world that those who do not see may see and those who see may become blind. Right. Mm. See, Christ said, and he was showing us, he was the church of the Lord, you know. Uh, you know, God was telling them, these letters see that true value was not in material possessions, but in a right relationship with Christ Jesus. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. It wasn't in our position. He said, man, if you want a right relationship with me, I'm going to give you everything. Amen. I'm going to give you something that lasts. Amen. I'm going to give you salvation. I'm going to give you happiness. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to give you love. Yeah. I'm going to give you kindness. Come on, somebody. I'm going to give you perseverance. I'm going to give you everything that you need so you can make it. And above all, I'll give you self-control. So that you can seek me. Are you listening? Amen. See, Christ is, he's on top of his game. Amen. We serve a Lord like nobody else. Are y'all listening? Are y'all getting what I'm saying? See, 
their possession would have no value compared to the everlasting future that Christ has for us. Amen. I don't care what we have today, brothers and sisters. I'm speaking to somebody. That everlasting future that we got coming is what counts. Amen. Amen. I want to make sure I got that in my bank. Amen. Amen. Because one day our money is going to be taken from the bank. <laughs> Amen. Have I got a witness? Are y'all listening? I want to know that I'm banking with Jesus. Amen. You know, if I ever open a bank, I'm going to put Jesus on the bank. Amen. Bank of Jesus. Amen. I wonder how rich I'll be. Come on, somebody. Hey, my God. Let them come in. I'll give them the word. And say, okay, give me your money. I'm going to invest it for you. Amen. Because you ain't doing nothing with it anyway. Amen. I'll give some back to the folks. God said he was about to spit the church out of his mouth because they had come become lukewarm. God would discipline this lukewarm church unless it turned from his indifferences toward him. Amen. God's purpose in discipline is not to punish, but to bring the church back. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. See, just as, as, as the spark of love can be rekindled in a marriage. Yes. Have I got a witness? Amen. Well, I'm going to speak to somebody this morning. Just like you can spark love in a marriage so the Holy Spirit can reignite our zeal for God. See, when the Holy Ghost is on fire, it's got a zeal for God. It, it, it moves in the, in the direction of God. It wants to continue doing the work of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Continue witnessing for God. Amen. It starts in the heart of those who have lost the love for Christ. It starts right here. Amen. If you've lost your love for Christ, go back to Christ. Just like you wait on your loved one when she leaves you. Standing at the door waiting for her to knock. Oh, I, I, I y'all better help me this morning, amen. Just, just like when you, you, you're waiting for your wife, and you're left and you're at the door and you're just waiting, you're peeking out the window. I know she's coming back. I can't wait till she knocks on the door. Have I got a witness? You got to wait on him. Wait on God, Amen. And if you know, if you don't, my Lord, help me, Jesus. If you got, if you're seeking God, you don't have to wait on Him to knock, because He's already there. He's already came on in. My God, I'm talking to somebody. Are you listening this morning? See, the church was complacent. They said, "I have all I need: money, luxury, wealth, the stuff, the power. I'm rich." They felt self. Satisfied. But they had one thing missing. They were without the presence of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. They were without the presence of the Holy Ghost. Right. Christ knocked at the door of their hearts. But they were so busy enjoying worldly pleasures. Are you getting this? They were, Christ was knocking at the door. But they were so busy enjoying worldly pleasures, parties, my God, bombshells, jacuzzis, <laughs> nightclubs, my God. They were so busy enjoying pleasures that they didn't notice that God was standing at the door trying to come in. We got to understand, we got to, we got to let that light go. Amen. Because when we're so busy, we don't hear Jesus. We, 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 we're looking for pleasures. Amen. Are you are are you getting the troublemaker up here? Amen. My mama. See, when you find yourself feeling indifferent to the church, to God, to the Bible, to the Word, you begin to shut God out out of, out of your life. Amen. When you start seeing, oh, there's something wrong with the church. I don't like the church, or there's an indifference. When you begin to feel that, you're cutting. You you're just shutting God's door right there. Hmm. See, you have to leave the door open to your heart continually. Amen? Right. Have I got a witness? Amen. And you won't need to worry about hearing the knock. That's it. Amen. See, when your heart is open for Jesus, you don't have to worry to hear the knock. Come on, somebody. He's already ready to step on in. You all say, come on, Lord. I, I, my heart is open to hear from you today. Come on now. But the question is, are you listening? Yeah. Uh-oh. Let me take him to the word. Let me take them to the word. 19, hermano. Yo reprendo y castigo a todos los que aman. 
Sé pues celoso y arrepiéntete. Amén.